We're talking team needs today here on Seahawks Today, powered by Chess Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. We'll go through the top eight needs that the Seahawks have heading into next week's draft and some potential players that are being linked to them based on those positions in just a matter of moments. Before we do, I have a challenge for the 12s today. If we can get 300 comments or more on today's video, then we will go live for the first round of the NFL Draft right here on Seahawks today. Got to get 300 comments, though. It only takes one person to drop 300 comments. If everybody watching dropped a comment, we'd get there easily. So do your part. We'll go live for the NFL Draft if we can get 300 comments on today's show. Let's start with need number one. It's the obvious one that we've talked about the entire offseason. That's the interior of the offensive line. And there's a few names in particular that come to mind for the Seahawks when it comes to addressing this knee. One of those is Troy Faltano, the offensive guard from the University of Washington. Now, some people are saying he might play guard, might play tackle, but whatever it may be, the Seahawks will gladly use him. Cooper Beebe is another name to watch. He would be a potential guy to look at day two for Seattle, who uh, I think would be capable of starting from day one. And then there's Jackson Powers Johnson from the University of Oregon uh, at the center position. And you look at where the Seahawks are at on their offensive line right now. I know some of you are saying, why would you bring in Jackson Powers Johnson when you got Olu Owatimi? Well, let's be honest here. Jury's still out on Olu as well as Anthony Bradford here. If we're going to be honest, any of the three guys, whether it's Troy, Cooper, or Jackson, all three would be upgrades from what we saw from Olu and Anthony Bradford last year. Bring them in, compete, let the best man win, see who can get the job there. Let's go to the interior of the defensive line now. And I know what some of you may be thinking. Well, you have Jaron Reed there. Uh, you brought in Jonathan Hankins and all that. But let's be frank with you all. Those are temporary solutions for a long-term problem. A long-term problem that has faced the Seahawks for quite some time. They passed on Jalen Carter last year, ended up with Devin Witherspoon, but you didn't still fix what's going on there. We know the Seahawks are very interested in Byron Murphy out of Texas. No secret about that. Byron Murphy had a pre-draft visit with the Seahawks, and it seems like there's some momentum going that direction as far as the number 16 overall pick. Johnny Newton, Jerzon Newton from Illinois, is a guy that's also been talked about as well. And then somebody that the Seahawks coaching staff, Mike McDowell and company, is very familiar with is Chris Jenkins, the defensive tackle from Michigan. If you decide to go with the interior of the offensive line or another position with that first-round pick, Jenkins could be a guy to watch for a pick later on in the draft to still fill that need. Here's what we're talking about at the Seahawks' defensive line right now. As you can see, Jaron Reed is there, Jonathan Hankins and company. But I don't think any of us – feel 100% confident that this is uh, going to put the Seahawks in the best position to succeed and for the line of success, if you will. I think Byron Murphy could come in right away and compete with Jaron Reed for that starting job, or at the very least, play a significant role and get a decent amount of playing time for Seattle on that D-line there. So what would you rather draft? Would you rather go with between the two top prospects right now for the Seahawks, Troy Faltano out of Washington, or would you rather go with Byron Murphy out of Texas? If it's Troy, type TF. If it's Byron, type BM. Let us know on our pin comment today which one you would rather roll with. Number three, we're going to the safety position. The Seahawks made some massive changes when it came to the safety spot this offseason, moving on from Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs. They did bring in Rayshon Jenkins from the Jacksonville Jaguars, but that's not going to be enough. They still need to go get more. Now, safety, I would be shocked if the Seahawks spend a first-round pick at the safety spot. So we got to look at guys that are later on that have been kind of linked to Seattle. Tyler Newbin's name has popped up from Minnesota. Cole Bishop seems to be a guy they really like out of Utah as well. And then somebody that uh, folks here in the Pacific Northwest are very familiar with that I think would be uh, a very much of a, a home run fan pick of sorts Jaden Hicks from Washington State as well as a possibility. Here's what we're looking at when it comes to the safety room right now for Seattle. Julian Love and Rayshon Jenkins holding it down uh, at those two safety spots, but 
Mike McDonald has already said he plans to use three safeties, and you really just don't have the depth right now to do much three safety sets with Kobe Bryant and Jarek Reed and some of the others there. They're going to need more than that if they want to be effective running three safety sets. They're going to need some help as far as that goes. Number four, the linebacker position. Some massive changes to the linebacker position for Seattle this offseason as uh, Bobby Wagner and Jordan Brooks left, and uh, we saw some big moves, right? The Seahawks specifically under Mike McDonald, it was a renewed focus when it came to guys that did well in pass coverage at the linebacker position. Some names to watch, kind of like what we talked about with the safety spot. It is a need, but it's not going to be a day one need for Seattle. I'm looking at guys like Junior Colson, who had a visit with the Seahawks uh, back in the Combine uh, from the University of Michigan, Cedric Gray from North Carolina, Jeremiah Trotter from Clemson. Trotter has seen his stock start to come up quite a bit as well, so we'll see what they do there. But you can see with this group, you know, I like the Jerome Baker and the Terrell Dodson signings, but those are just one-year deals. And you need a steady linebacker behind them to rotate as well. So I would expect that uh, one of those day three guys – potentially get selected to join that Seahawks rotation at the linebacker spot. More needs to get to here in just a bit, but what do you think is the biggest need for the Seattle Seahawks entering the 2024 NFL Draft? Drop us a comment and let us know what you think. Got a great deal we're offering Seahawks fans right now. Seahawks hats are on sale now, but on top of that, we're offering free shipping as well. Just for a limited time, we have these hats you see on your screen now, as well as Plenty of others as well. So go see for yourself. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks hats to get yours today. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Hats, free shipping, on sale now. Take advantage of it. Go see for yourself. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks hats. Number five, the tight end position. Colby Parkinson is gone. Will Disley is gone. Noah Fant's back on a new two-year deal. And you also bring in Pharaoh Brown from the New England Patriots. He's more of a blocking tight end. So for the Seattle Seahawks, they're going to be looking at guys that are good receiving tight ends. There's a few names in particular that come to mind. Now, while we're not expecting Brock Bowers to be available when he uh, comes off the board, when the Seahawks pick at 16, if for whatever reason he slips and makes his way to 16, he's the pick for the Seattle Seahawks. I would move heaven and earth to bring Brock Powers to Seattle. If he's there, you take him, you figure everything else out. And we know that John Schneider likes to go best available here, although this isn't the biggest need. If he's there, you'll take him. Sanders, not a bad football player. Cade Stover as well. Some potential options uh, there for the Seahawks. Seattle also had a visit with uh, Jatavian Sanders as well, as far as that goes. Here is the uh, tight end depth chart right now, as you can see. Noah Fant uh, there with Brown. Russell and uh, Mabry not expected to be much impact players. Uh, We'll see if one or both those guys even make the roster at this point. Edge rusher. You can never have too many pass rushers on your football team. And for the Seattle Seahawks, I know that this isn't the biggest priority, but where they pick at 16, there is some interesting names to watch, okay? Um, Dallas Turner. Leatu Latu, Chop Robinson, a name that Chop, we've seen his stock kind of all over the place. Some people have a first-round grade. Some people have a third-round grade on him. So he's one that is kind of a wild card. And we didn't even put Jared Verse in this graphic as well. There's plenty of guys out there. It's a good class when it comes to edge rushers. And you look at those outside linebacker spots right now. Boye Mafe's there. Uchina and Wosu's there. There's question marks about Uchina if he's going to be the same player again coming off the injury. And then when you talk about death, depth pieces, Daryl Taylor is not much more than just a guy that can get after the quarterback. He doesn't do well in run coverage, doesn't do well in pass coverage. So you could do better than Daryl Taylor here. I think that uh, there might be some guys that you might find yourself in a position like, eh, we can't pass up on that guy if he's still around. Who's a player the Seahawks should draft? Give me a name that comes to mind. Plenty of draft prospects to choose from. Let us know in the comments section below. 
We are your Seahawks off-season headquarters here on the channels. We're bringing you the best NFL draft coverage you won't find anywhere else. In the days leading up to the draft next week, we are certainly ramping things up, telling you all you need to know, bringing you mock drafts, draft targets, team needs, all the insights, all the analysis. It's in one place right here on Seattle Seahawks today. If you ain't alive, you ain't subscribed to Seahawks today. Join the family now. Never miss a moment. The latest happenings in your favorite team covered each and every day on Seahawks Today. Subscribe now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Corner is also a need for the Seattle Seahawks. And I got to tell you, when you look at the Seahawks team, you have some pieces, right? But you're trying to find some flexibility here, specifically long term. I'll explain more here in just a second when we get to the depth chart. But this is a position where... I'm not looking to spend a day one, maybe not even a day two pick potentially, but I still need to address it accordingly. And there's some guys that are still talented they are going to be available later on, like TJ Tampa from Iowa State, Kamari Lassiter from Georgia, Mike Sandrastill, who actually played under uh, Mike McDonald there at the University of Michigan as well. You take a look at the depth chart. Mike Jackson, I don't know how much longer he's going to be in Seattle. He's been... Uh, we've talked about him as kind of a placeholder of sorts the last couple of years. He's lost his job a couple of times. Same can be said kind of for Trey Brown, right? And as much as we love Devin Witherspoon and the great season he had, he's going to be best as being a nickel, being a, a free-flowing floater type. So you need another outside corner potentially so Witherspoon can do his thing at the nickel back spot. Last on this list is the offensive tackle position. And I know what some of you may be saying right away before you come after my throat is that, okay, you have your two starting tackles, right? Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross. But both of them struggled to stay healthy last year, specifically Abraham Lucas. And on top of that with Abraham Lucas, I have concerns about that knee holding up. And at the very least, you need guys – to be able to back them up. Really, your only decent backup offensive tackle right now is George Fant. So here's some names to keep in mind for down the, potentially down the line after the first round. Uh, Roger Rosengarten from Washington played under Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff at Washington. Patrick Paul. Uh, Kingsley Sumatia from BYU, also a name. Here's what we're looking at when I talk about the depth chart here. Okay. George Fant is really it. That, that's it. And if Cross and Lucas both go down again, remember they went down in the same game week one last year, I don't feel comfortable at all. You need some more help, so we'll see what the Seahawks do there. Before we go, one more question. Let's ask you, what's your confidence level in John Schneider's draft plan as this team prepares for what's ahead in the 2024 draft? Let us know how good you're feeling, one through ten. I feel about a seven right now, okay? I feel optimistic, but I need to see it first. What do you guys think? Weigh in the comment section. Let us know, and we'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.